What's up, guys? Happy Sunday. Hopefully you're all having a good... Actually, Sunday. It's Sunday. Hopefully you're all having a good Sunday evening. I just got done messing around. I went out to Walmart in a computer store to buy a wall mount so I can mount one of my monitors. I come home and I come to find out the back of both my monitors don't have the part where you could screw in the back. So I just spent that money for nothing. But I was able to figure it out. I was able to rig it up. So now I have all my monitors, all five of them, right in front of me. So I'm glad I got that all figured out. <clears throat> Hopefully you guys enjoyed yesterday's class. I decided to open that one up for free to the public for everybody. It's a super long class, almost three hours, I want to say it was. Most people ain't even going to watch the whole thing, so why not? I had a lot of fun yesterday doing that class with you guys. We actually dug into some pretty deep stuff. We really did. I even found some stuff that blew me away a little bit. Alright, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through some charts, prepare a watch list for the upcoming week, and I also wanted to configure my trade ideas scanners. There's my trade ideas right there. I want to configure it to set it up. I'm not satisfied with some of the scans that I have, and I want to go back through and retweak them and set it all up good now that I have my other monitor out in front of me. For the longest time, that fifth monitor, it was like right behind me. So I would have to turn my whole body around to look at it, and that's where I had all my scans. And... Being here for hours at a time, that, that just gets annoying looking back like that at that other monitor. Those three hours flew by like nothing. Yeah, it really did. Also, if you have a love for this and you're passionate about this, it's not work. It's You're doing it for fun, pretty much. I come in here every single day. 8 30 i sit down next time i look at the clock it's going on noon one o'clock in the afternoon and i'm like wow so trade ideas for the most part it's a just a stock scanner they don't have a new scanner but they did recently put in a um a new section right here so if you pull it up right here they they now have a news tab and it'll just tell you the news that came out for that stock they don't have any type of like news scanning the only new scanners that I know of is Scans, S-C-A-N-Z, which used to be Equity Feed, and Benzinga. See, look at all this stuff I have here.
So EYES, this thing had opportunities all week. Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Every single day, this thing had like a two, three dollar pop on it. Right here on this day, it fell apart right here. Shorts thought it was over with, with this move. Came right back up. End of the day, shorts got squeezed. That should have been an indicator right there that this was a swing overnight. And look what happened from 11 the next day it gaps up to $26. That's insane. Imagine picking up a thousand shares at 11. Waking up the next day at 6 in the morning and it's up to $26. That's a $15,000 overnight. That's four months worth of work that the average Joe makes at a job. And you just made it overnight. Fades off the next day. Short was over with. After that, the squeeze was over with. That's what happened. Shorts got squeezed. Then when the squeeze is over, everybody takes their profit and then it slowly fades off. Let it level out. Still continuing to fade out. Gets a nice little reversal right there. Nice pop. And then look at that. Goes down just below 10. Runs all the way up to 1250, fades back down, surges back up to 13, down to 11, back up to 13, down to 12, up to 14, 15, 16 dollars. Somebody got squeezed. That's what happened. This thing's probably going to gap up Monday. That's my guess. Some short got squeezed. They thought all these shorts pile into it. And then they all have to cover. And then these retail people, retail traders show up. It's a double whammy. We might get some opportunity on Monday. But just remember, look what it did. Since it's squeezing right now, look what it did right here. It might do the same thing. It closed pretty strong. Just like Friday. Monday, it could gap up like this. And then the rest of the day, it could just fade off. We'll see what happens. That other stock, what was it? SL NLSP. This one's even getting squeezed. It's probably going to gap up Monday morning. So, Mon or Friday in the morning time, NLSP. Kept trying to squeeze over that $7. It just got denied, 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 denied. One, two, three, four, five times it got denied. From seven, it came down to five bucks here. From five to six, six dollars, five fifty. It just consolidated. The whole day. And it tried to break down right here. That sh This move right here. Should have been the indicator. That this thing's getting squeezed. There, If you got on Twitter. 
you've seen all of these gurus, all, all of them were shorting NLSP because it got denied above $7. All right here. So they're all short. And then it goes into this long consolidation phase. They're holding on to their position, waiting for the next leg down. When it fell down right here, and it came right back up and reclaimed where it was consolidating, that should have been the indicator right there that shorts are getting squeezed. And now come Monday morning, this thing's probably going to gap up over $10 easily. All those shorts have to cover. They don't want to hold short over a weekend. It had insane volume. How much volume was on this stock? 170 million. So that's absurd volume. And what's the float? 5.7 million. So 170 uh, million in volume. Let's see. 170 million divided by 5. We'll say that. They rotated that float 34, 34 times. Fifty. Yeah, about thirty-four times they've rotated that flow. That's insane. So NLSP, that's gonna get a good gap up Monday morning. I don't know if I'm gonna pay attention to NLSP and EYES come Monday morning. Because it's going to gap up so much. And I don't want to get that FOMO chasing after these. And they're going to be super volatile. And crazy. I mean look at EXPR. Friday this ran up from pretty much $4.00. Up to what was that? It's not EXPR. ENTX. That's what it was. I mean, look at that. From six runs all the way up to ten bucks. After it got squeezed, faded off. From 10 all the way down to 7s, 6s. Um, I don't know if ENTX is going to continue pushing up higher. I think it's a... It could... It's a, it's a long shot though. It fails to hold its gains. Here it pushed up from 4 to 7, fail, then it got squeezed and ran up to 10, now it's fading off back down. It may pop back up to $10, it may not. Insane volume has to pump into the stock for it just to move. I mean, the other day it had 361 million in volume. And then the next day, it had 125 million in volume. So you have insane volume like that pumping into the stock, and it can't even hold its gains. I don't know. We'll see. It may gap up Monday as well. I don't know. That's the question um, everybody is going to be wondering.
So I'm going to write these down. I'm going to write them down in the Monday chat. So EYES, NLSP, and ENTX. Was there any other ones? S E E L E B O N So for these three, I'm just going to say for Monday. Going to expect these names to gap up a lot. I will not chase after the FOMO. In the morning. Going to expect these names to gap up a lot. I will not chase after the FOMO in the morning. Expect them to open up, get a quick pop, then slowly fade off. Other names that are in play. Ticker symbol. S E E L ticker symbol E B O N S O S Funko even had a good squeeze on Friday as well. Funko didn't have really much volume going on. Look at this move though. From 16 up to 1750 and then fades off and then from $16 just runs up non-stop all the way to 1850. Expect this to probably pull back down and then 17 hold as support. If 17 can hold as support, it could work its way back on up to 18. And then that next area is going to be 20. But this needs a pullback. It's been running now for three straight days. Even longer. Funko is a weird one. And then <sighs> GameStop. What a missed opportunity. So, right here, this day, when GameStop ran from 270. All the way up to 350 and started crashing down right here. I announced it in the chat. I'm gonna try buying the bounce. I was gonna try buying a thousand shares and I was anticipating this 
I called it in chat. Buying a thousand shares and writing it up for the $100 bounce. I would have made $100,000, but TD Ameritrade would not fill my order. I was trying to buy it just when it was dropping below $200. It's a textbook bounce play. Textbook. All you have to do, draw your trend line on it. You see that trend line, trend line, and then it bottomed here at 170, surged up into a halt. That's when I knew the bounce was coming. They open it back up, rips up into another halt. I was trying to buy. I tried buying here and I tried buying here, but it wouldn't fill me. And then by the time this thing opened back up, way up here, I'm not going to chase after that thing. So I've watched this run from 170 all the way up to 270. That was my $100 bounce right there. Why? It's a basic textbook thing. When a stock has a big move like that, either to the upside or the downside, we just made a video on this, what, a couple days ago. Majority of the time, you're going to see a, a stock either bounce or retrace 50% of its big move either to the upside or to the downside and look at that from 350 ran all the way down to 170 and it ran, bounced and ran all the way up that's about halfway halfway of this right here of this move right here Epic bounce play on GameStop. I know a lot of people probably never seen anything like this before. But I've seen it happen over and over and over and over again. Let me see. Right here. ABIO. From this move up, goes down, bounces up about 50% of the move right there. This one, it ran up, it retraced about 50%, consolidated, and then took off and made new highs for the day. This move right here. Pulled down. Bounced. About 50%. Right there. That move right here. Bounced up 50%. Even over it. Up to like probably 70%. This See, here's another example. This move up right here, then it pulled down and it bounced up. That's about 50% of that move right here. Now you see it happening over and over and over and over and over again. Your brain is a natural pattern seeker, so. If you're studying and breaking down these charts, you are going to pick up on patterns that other people don't see. This is a pattern that I pick up and other people don't see. Everybody's going to see opportunities in different charts. Like right here, a stock made a wedge, broke out from the wedge, pulled back, 
held it. That's looking bullish strength. And then from there, it was just blast off from $24 all the way up to $72 nonstop. From 10.15, it topped out at 11 o'clock just after. So one hour, it ran up nonstop. People trying to chase it, trying to catch after, when's it going to bounce? All you got to simply do is draw a trend line connecting all the lower highs. You see it never crossed it. There, 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 there. Oh, it finally crossed it at $29.30 and then got a good bounce up to like 47 bucks. So that's like a $20 bounce right there from 12.15 to 12.30, 15 minutes. You guys see how I'm breaking these charts down? This is how you do it. You take screenshots of these charts. All these different charts I have here. You take screenshots of them. You break them down and study them. Look at that example. Look at that big pullback. Bounced up about 50%. Same exact play. As GameStop. Same exact play. Now you guys see it. This isn't gambling. You clearly see it happening over and over and over and over and over again. It's all about remembering this stuff. And then when you see it. Pulling the trigger. Trusting in what you know. And being a boss. And cashing in. If you're scared. You're not going to make money. Scared people don't make money. A lot of people, they're, they see it's going to happen, and then they get scared, and they don't pull the trigger, and then they watch the stock do exactly what they thought. And then those emotions kick in, because they were right, and they didn't take advantage of it. And then you know what they end up doing? They end up chasing after it, and then they ultimately take a big L. And then they kick themselves in the butt. And then it just leads into a, a big hole. They go into revenge trading. It's, it's a disaster. When I was trying to get filled on GameStop, I was doing both. I was trying to get a limit order in, and then I was trying to market order in. It just would not fill me. My order just sat there. It wouldn't fill me at all. So, when GameStop, as soon as it opened up right here and ran up, popped up to that halt, I put my order in to buy, and it was just moving with the stock, and it just wouldn't fill me. And then, as soon as it got halted, I canceled it. And then when it reopened, and I seen it reopen, and start to surge back up, I hit market order buy. I was trying to get in, and it just sat there, moving with the candle, up and down, up and down, and then popped up. No more, which is the sign it's getting halted. And then it got halted and it never filled me. So then I canceled it again. And then when it opened up again and it wicked down and popped back up, I was like, man, I can't be chasing after this. It already ran from 170 all the way up to 230. That's a $50 move. There's no way I can chase after that. So I had to sit and watch it run all the way up to 270 bucks up here. That was my opportunity and that's the cost of being with a retail broker, I guess.
So that was a bum. And uh... KOSS. Yeah, did the exact same thing. We've been saying it for weeks. Koss and GameStop, they move in sympathy with each other. So whatever GameStop does, Koss is going to follow in sympathy. I don't know too much anymore about AMC. I mean, AMC fell off a long time ago. They got that thing under wraps. That thing's heavily manipulated. Heavily manipulated. You see how volatile COS and GameStop is? AMC is not even that volatile. What's it moving from 11 up just over 12? So a $1 move right there? Whoop de doo. And then from 12 crashed all the way down to 10, a $2 crash and just. Look at how nasty that is. That's extremely nasty. That's just... That's disgusting. That's totally different looking than AMC or Koss and GameStop. GameStop, you had a straight line down. From 11.50... Swooshes all the way down to 10. Rips back up to 11. Whooshes back down to that low right there. And then pushes lower. And then grinds all the way back up. But even this move right here. You see it bounced up. 50%. Boom. Rich C, yeah, direct access would probably fix that because with these retail brokers, not a lot of people understand your retail brokers like TD Ameritrade, E Trade, Charles Schwab, Robinhood, when you hit your limit order buy or your market order buy, that order is not going directly to the market. You're sending that order to the broker, TD Ameritrade. Let's say you're trading with TD Ameritrade. You want to buy this stock. You hit buy. That buy goes to TD Ameritrade. And then TD Ameritrade sends it to the market makers at the exchange. They're the, they're the middleman. So yeah, if you have those professional brokers like Speed Trader, Trade um Light what is it? Lightspeed, Dash Trader, Centerpoint Securities, Interactive Brokers, you, there is no middleman. It's a direct one-way access from you to the brokerage. That's it or or to the market maker. That's it. <clears throat> that's why you pay to have access. You pay for the platform fee. You have to pay ECN fees. Um, What's the other one? It's been a moment since I've used a direct access broker. You got to pay a NASDAQ fee, ECN fee. You got to pay the platform fee. Most of the time, you got to buy the data packages. You got to buy the NASDAQ total view. But at the end of the day, I don't mind using a retail broker. Most of the time, my orders get filled, no problem. I get in and out of the stocks. But when those insane opportunities come up, like with GameStop, that's where a retail broker will screw you.
What a move, though. That was so epic. This happened on the 10th. So, Wednesday. Let's see. RBLX opened that day too. See right here. See I was posting a snapshot of GameStop real time. I said I would not recommend buying the bounce if you are new. And I said here it is. I tried getting filled on GameStop on the reopen. I never got filled. It's going to be a $100 bounce GameStop. I wish I got filled on that. I would have made easy 100k. I studied for these moments. So blank pissed about that. I can't even now. It's gone. But then Josh Mart, he took advantage of it. That's what we do here in the chat every single day. I'm in here calling out opportunities. If you're showing up to the chat every day, you're going to learn something new every single day. I'm calling out what I see, posting pictures of charts, breaking them down. Members, we be killing it. We really do. When EYES started popping up at the end of the day, we knew it was getting squeezed. We knew it. That insane volume that hit EYES. That volume. Look at that volume spike. Every candle was averaging 300k. From 11 up to 12, 13. Just epic. I just use Street Smart Edge for the charts. I can't trade with uh Charles Schwab. I I think it's stupid that they have a margin list and you gotta check to see if the stock is marginable. That's that's you're such at a disadvantage, it's not fair. I forgot to tell you guys though, Weeble I can't show you guys the chart, but um, because it has my account number on it. But Weeble has a desktop platform you can download to your desktop. I was actually checking it out. It's pretty slick and cool. I'd show it to you guys, but I, I'm going to be transferring money over to it, and it displays your account number. I don't want to put my account number out there. There's no way for you to hide it. And then Ebon. This had an epic move Friday. This was just a silent killer. Right when that market opened. At 7, this thing just ran all the way up to almost 11.50. A almost $5 move within the first hour and a half of the day. And then it consolidated here at the top. We were watching it for it to consolidate and pick a direction for its next leg. 
but it chose to go down. It might gap up Monday. Because this next leg down right here wasn't even that much. Even taking advantage of costs. These spikes are just amazing. Look at that. 27 up to $32. Tops out at $34. I mean, these are life-changing moves. Look at that morning setup. Surges up, pulls back, and curls at that VWAP. From 27, just blast off. Real quick opportunity. So S-E-E-L, this one was a bit of a tricky one on Friday. This stock just kept running up, pulling back, running up, pulling back, running up. If you were trying to chase after the breakout on this, you would have failed miserably. Most people always try to buy high of day breakouts because that's the way they've been taught. You have all these gurus out here teaching them buy high of day breakouts. Buy high of day breakouts. That's the wrong way to go. So look, stock surged up, pulled back. Came up back up around, making it look like it was going to be a U-shaped breakout. You would have failed. Right there. Stock came all the way back down. Then it came all the way back up. You would have failed again. Right there. And then it came back around. And you would have failed again. Came all the way back up. Failed again. Dang. Why do I keep trying to chase after these high of day breakouts? They're failing. Came back up. Finally pushed over, but it was a struggle. Look at the grinding on that thing. From 450 to 470, a 20 cent grind to new highs. Then it starts to pull back. <clears throat> People thinking it's going to fail again, but old resistance should hold as support, right? That's what happened. And then it came all the way back up. But just look at that. New high. Come back up around. Struggling. But then it started getting that grinding action going. All right here. That grinding. And then you get that euphoria move right there. This one was a tricky one. It's a two dollar move, but I mean it took what five hours from one o'clock since the market opened to move up two dollars. What's the float on S E E L? Sixty seven million. And it had 310 million in volume. So this is why, a big reason why I stay away from higher float stocks. 66 million float, you need a lot of volume to get that stock up and going. And this stock had 300 million in volume. And they were able to rotate that float what six times and still it only moved up two bucks 
And you see how hard it took it to move that two bucks. So lower float stocks, even if you have insane volume, just look at the moves that they make. NLSP, very volatile stock. From 570s up to 6, 720. I mean, these candles, even this death candle here. From 713 all the way down to 613. That's a $1 candle right there. Look at that. 628 to 720. That's a $1 candle. That's crazy. I've point I pointed it out in the chat. We've seen this setup on three different stocks this week. The same exact setup. Let me see. I should have posted it on Friday. Three times we've seen the same setup. Here's one on ENV. B. This was from like Monday or Tuesday. But you see how it had a morning rip. Morning rip failed to continue higher. If you just pay attention to the rounding bottom right there, little poke up, and then another rounding bottom, and it's got that surge up. Now, if you look at NLSP. It's the same setup. Morning pushed. Morning pushed higher. You got your rounding bottom. Pop right there. Another rounding bottom. It pushed up to a new high. It happened three times. Three different stocks. I forget what the other stock was. Hmm. I was just looking at EYES. It almost has the same setup right here too. You got your pop. This rounding pop and there there's your rounding and then it popped up to a new high right there kind of the same setup but a little bit different paying attention to what keeps happening and familiarizing yourself with patterns that's how you're able to take advantage of this stuff when it's happening real time, you tell yourself, like, this looks familiar. I've seen this before. And then that's where you get that confidence. And you see it before it even happens. There's a lot of people that always come into the chat they're, when they're brand new. And their, their first couple days are very crucial. I'll just observe what they say and how they think and I, I kid you not most of them are always waiting for a stock to push up too high and when it gets too far overextended then they think about buying it i've always been the type of trader i thrive off of reversals and anticipating bounces 
there's a lot more money in that area versus chasing after high of day breaks. All right, let me do something real quick. Man, why does it keep signing me out? Give me one second, guys. I'm trying to open up my uh, email here to get the watch list. Yeah, you guys always see those messages for people. There's a lot of like YouTube comments. Like they're ra real random. Like they'll write like a whole paragraph explaining how hot the market is and the indexes are pushing up to new highs. And then they'll say like, I made $50,000 thanks to Thomas Edison. You guys should follow him on WhatsApp. Like, I didn't look too much into WhatsApp, but seeing all these different scammers, that's the only thing that they use. I'm convinced WhatsApp is just like a spam. Everything's spam if it comes to WhatsApp. Like, what is it even anyway? I have no idea what WhatsApp is. So WhatsApp account management, never. Yeah, I would never believe oh, anybody who uses WhatsApp. Let me see the spy real quick. Look at these corrections. Deep, deep sell-offs. And then it just rebounds and all the way back up to new highs. You're going to hear all kinds of people say bear market, bear market. Nobody, nev nobody knows, guys. Nobody knows when it's coming. Just take it day by day. And we also just got another round of stimulus checks. I think it's $1,400. So expect majority of everybody to throw that into the stock market. So the stock market's going to continue pushing, I think. All this crazy momentum's going to continue going. VIAC, that's a great push. 86 all the way up just under 100 bucks. Look at that daily chart. Oh my goodness. Just a non-stop from 10 bucks. Look at this. This is insane. Look at that. That's crazy.
way back when the financial crisis hit right here. And then look at that rebound all the way up. Wow. Look at all the volume back here. All of it now compared to recently. Like look at all that extreme volume. That that should be a big indicator that there is just so much money in the stock market right now than there ever was. Nobody wants the party to end. D-I-S-C-A. This has got a gap to fill. Up to 80 bucks. I mean, even that move, look at that. From 20 bucks runs just non-stop up to $71. KODK. This just recently had a good push on it. Everybody remembers KOKD, uh, KODK. Yeah, if KOKD can hold up at 950. If it can hold up at 950, it may retry to test $10 again. And if it can break up through 10, this thing's going to 1050, 11. I mean, it's got room to run all the way up to 1250. The float isn't as big as it, uh, or small as it used to be. Yeah, those YouTube technology and these bots, these self-learning algorithmic bots, they're insane. It's like they literally be having conversations with themselves in the comments. It's scary. It really is. Thanks for subscribing, Matt. Welcome to the Wolf Pack. Yeah, those bots are insanely scary. It'd be like someone comments, thanks to Kelly Glad, I got paid 50K in two months with my investments. Reach out to her for more information at 1 800 235 8585 WhatsApp. And then someone else will comment, wow, but that doesn't compare to David King. He times three to my money. A thousand dollars to three thousand dollars in a week. I get weekly payouts. Reach out to him. One eight hundred eight two seven five six three five nine. WhatsApp. All right, KOKD OCG. WhatsApp is a chat app like WeChat or what not. I've never even heard of WeChat, 
WhatsApp. There's just too many of them out there. YVR. YVR. Pot stocks really took off last week. I know that. Just looking at these charts real quick. So NLSP failed follow through. High volume names with tiny float best to trade in silence. NLSP, likely 4 a.m. action and fade off. Keep in mind, these things are nuts. You do not want to step in front with size in this market. Be cautious. Wait for exhaustion. Everyone will be on toes after ENTX XELA type action. That means sometimes it's better to avoid and play better things. Ideally, six, seven, eight, if we're lucky, and fade off. Many times they open way high pre market and fade into 7 a.m. for the trap. Huh. Yeah, we've been just seeing a lot of just short squeezes because these these shorts, they anticipate it. They anticipate the backside of the move. They all pile in and it just leads to these amazing opportunities. This is why I much rather let them guys fight over shorting and I'll stay on the lookout. For the next epic short squeeze. Because when these stocks squeeze guys. Oh it's such a beautiful thing. It really is. You could just see the panic. And just how explosive. These moves are. I mean. Insane. Look at that on EYES. Just insane. 11 to 1350 pulls down comes back another squeeze from 1250 all the way up to almost $16 insane and I tell the guys in chat when you see a short squeeze happening and that stock is just ripping and ripping you have to attack because it will run off without you. Same thing with KOSS. I know I'm going back to these stocks. But I mean there really are a lot of takeaways from these movers last week. Just insane moves. Runs up. Pulls back. Boom, continues pushing. This epic day right here. Runs up, pulls back. Boom, continues pushing up higher. Now if you're waiting around and now you're thinking about getting in on it on the second or the third time it's pulling back, that's a bit too extended. When you see massive, massive volume like this and a stock's going back and forth, back and forth like that, it's way overcrowded and it's too late. This is where st when stock scanners come in handy, setting alerts on these stocks for price levels.
RBLX. This is the newer IPO. 72 push and fade is ideal. 69 was a key level IPO day. So may have some trouble if it can base at 70. In which case I'd look for a fade back. Yeah, it'll probably pop back up to 73, maybe 74, and then from that, fade back down to the 68, 70 level. I don't know, though. I think there's a lot. I mean, Roblox is everywhere. All the kids, that's all they play is Roblox. So Roblox, keep it on watch for that $100 run next week. I think it's, uh, I think people are underestimating it. FLGT. Big sell off. C R E G. Oh, yeah. CREG is looking pretty good for a continuation. It can hold up at 9, push back up to 10. Same thing, just like KOKD. Press release, this thing is going to go crazy. PDSB. Hmm. 475 up to 7 is resistance. I'd like to see it push back up over 6. I'll set an alert on it and just move on. This um RYB, this stock just kept popping up and popping up and popping up on my scanners the past two days. Stock clearly loves to rip from 370s all the way up to almost six from 450. All the way up to six. Fifty four million float is what I see. Just keep it on the back burner. RYB KODK CREG back burner plays. Backburner watches, I'll say. BGI. A lot of consolidation on that daily chart. Zoom in on this daily. Look at that. From a buck seventy, runs all the way up to four. 
and then now it's been pulling back for three days, building up. This could be building up for another push back up over 450s, push over five. And if you scroll out on this bad boy, you see a lot of long upper wicks. The stock clearly is stating and showing us that it loves to run. It's up near its highs. I mean, it hasn't been this high since 2008. I don't know if that's true. This stock could have done many reverse splits. Keep it on the back burner. BGI. Daily looks good. I see you guys comment and I just want to get through these stocks real quick. SYN is on near a dollar. I won't really pay too much attention to it. I see it could push up, up over a dollar to two dollars. If you're in a small price stocks like that, most definitely keep an eye on it. OGI. Nice gap and go. He's got room to run up to 650. Bigger float though. CYH. Hmm. CYH is at new highs. Multi year highs. I mean, look at that consolidation. Pushes to the upside, pulls back, continues, confirms, continues. Nice, easy, under-the-radar play. Wow. Look at this. So, this is the daily chart. You could scroll back on it. It filled the gap. Well, right here it did. But, came all the way up and around. It's got room to push up. But, if you switch over to the weekly chart... Look at what happened recently right here. You had a nice little squeeze happening on this with that 50 day pushing up over the 200 day. Now you got the 100 day about to push up over the 200 day. Could be a nice little squeeze going in on it again, but it needs to pull back down. CYH, I like it for keeping an eye on. Bigger picture.
bigger picture, look at the weekly monthly chart. We're almost there. SLGG. Super League Gaming. Uh... I don't care for it. SIF. This thing's just been pushing and pushing. Light volume though. L-I-Z-I. -I. This one just won't die. This thing just keeps coming back and coming back. I can see something happening with this one. S-L-I-Z-I. -I. BNTR. Huh. This one could be building for something. You see, it's been consolidating just back and forth from four up to that $5. Four. Back and forth from four to five. So keep this on watch to see if it gets up and above five, breaks through 550. Um. Let's put a price alert at five. Man, there's just so much going on. Looks like American Airlines got squeezed. And then look at steel. Steel names have just been super strong.
I mean, look at that comeback. 18 down to 13, bottoms out, and then just runs all the way back up. That's super strong. Wow. It was um, ticker symbol X CLF and TMST. Mary Jane, the marijuana index. This one was hot last week, and then you see from the bottom there, March 5th, non-stop all the way up to 24, the resistance right here. So watch for pot stocks to pull back down next week.
Yeah, I had it on mute. Good call. Good save. P H U N, I said. That one was just a dump. You just, it didn't hold its gains at all. It may get a pop back up to 250, but it's just not worth it. Look at that 10 minute. You could clearly see it loves to pop, drop hard. Pop, drop hard. Look at all those pops back here. It just can't hold its gains. So that tells me people like to load up on it. And then as soon as it lifts, everybody sells it. So solar power, look for a continuation in those also. SUNW needs to get up over 16. I feel like the Monday morning, it's going to be weak. I really do. I think it's we're going to see a pullback at the beginning of the week with a lot of these names. So I'm going to be cautious Monday. A C A D Hmm. That's a big gap down. Looks like it's trying to build up. What happened? It's one of those pharmaceutical stocks, so they probably failed one of their FDA approvals and kiss it goodbye. It might have a good bounce on it. It might. It's looking like it's trying to gear up. I'll put a price alert at 28 bucks. Says you guys can't hear 